All right, ready? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to channel 27, guys. Sorry, we tried to do a live. It's We're having some technical difficulties big time, and we cannot get the corks figured out here. So um, we're going to make this short and quick, because I did tell two people that I would, or this one person that I would read their charts. Um, they contacted me this morning. So I am going to take a look at that, and Jenny is going to do a mini reading. Mm -hmm. We'll save the dream conversation for um, the next week, and we're just yeah. going to do this mini we reading. Could, we could get into it a little bit if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Because I would like, I'm curious, I would like to hear about your dream, Heidi. That I had last night? Yeah. So I had a crazy dream that, and I haven't had dreams like this in a while, but usually when I do have dreams, they are usually, um, how do I say this? They're negative. Okay. So like if I have a dream about somebody in an accident and I tell you not to get into the car, I probably shouldn't the next day. So my dreams are very minimum. Like they're, they're, but when I do have them, they mean something, you know, typically. Yeah. So, which is kind of why last night, and when I re remember a dream the whole entire day, it's kind of like, you know, it makes me nervous a little bit. So long story short, I had this dream that we were standing out, like I was standing outside of my house. I don't know if it was my house. You know, the house isn't the same house. I don't even know who I was with, but we were staying there and we were, they were, somebody declared like war North Korea was coming in here apparently. And the troops, so obviously we weren't here, but the troops were like walking in in a, sh a line and it was just hours and hours of just trucks after truck, after truck, after truck. It was crazy. Like I still can exactly picture being there. That's what's weird about it. And when I woke up in the next, like in the morning, I woke up and I was just like, oh my God, did that just happen? You know? Yeah. And it was like North Korea was coming in, but it was like everybody was told to evacuate. I don't even know where we were going, but you know, it was like one of those. So it was just really weird because usually when I have a dream, you know, not saying obviously the news is all over the place and I, we have been thinking about it and talking it a lot. So that obviously can be one of the reasons, but you know, it was just pretty strange. Well, and it's, it is, it is definitely strange when you don't have, when you're not like a regular dreamer or, you know, dreams often hold one meaning and then all of a sudden something really crazy happens like that and it just really stands out. Um, I dream every single night. On nights that I don't remember my dreams, those are really, really odd and that is usually an indicator that something else is going on. Um, but you're definitely right that the, the collective, d different people, certain people are honed in to a collective uh, stream of consciousness and it depends who you are um, what you spend your time doing uh, where you spend your time in your mind if that makes any sense yeah. so you know you and I are gonna have a certain kind of dreams and then this other person is gonna have a completely different kind of dream based because their life is so different from ours because they're ta they're tapped into a completely different um, co collective um, but you know I've had a dream about that too um, this theme of like enemy for a foreign enemy storming through barriers coming towards us. And I mean, if you look, just turn on the news that fear mongering is everywhere. So it, it almost seems like it, everybody's probably having dreams like that. Um, but I also know exactly what you're talking about when you said you feel like you're there. Um, and my view on it is kind of different than a lot of people. I think in some circumstances, we really are in a different place. Um, and it's not so much about physical location as it is about um, frequency and, and the soul, the, the spirit body can be, and we're omnipotent by nature. So we can and can and do exist in, on many different frequencies at, at the same time. So, you know, when you tell me that you, you, you stay in this air that you've been in from the dream, this, this mood kind of carries over from dream state to waking state. When I hear something like that, that just makes me think that you actually were witnessing something. You really were part of something. Today is a very special day. So today is the 26th, and this day has been spoken about um, for a very long time. 
there was a really big meeting held regarding um, Korea and what to do next. I don't know if you know that or not. No, I haven't had the chance to look today. Today's kind of been a chaotic day. Yeah, today's been a crazy day, but today has been significant for that because they. this is what, you know, the, the, the leaders of our country are discussing on this day is how to move forward. There's also been talks of drills, large scale nuclear drills. So there's definitely no accident that that's where your mind is going. You're tapping into the into that stream of consciousness. Um, I also have really crazy dreams. Anybody that knows anything about me, um, my the the line of my work, the fields of my work, kind of it, it brings me into these really dark um, these really dark places, these really dark characters that I choose to shine a light on. And it's that old saying: when you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares into you. And so I have dreams of these people coming into my bedroom and, uh, you know, they're, they're watching and they're listening and they want to know what I'm doing and what I plan on writing about and, and where I'm at. Um, and I think that, you know, when we're discussing dreams, it's so broad because there's so many different layers to it all. Right. Um, but you know, long story short, um, there, there's, if you're having weird dreams that like are, are staying with you throughout the day, um, the best thing that I could, that I would tell anybody to, to do is journal. That's what I do. And then you look back and you're like, Oh my God. And then like yeah. a few weeks will go by and you'll be like, I, that totally makes sense. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I think dreams can be prophetic also. And sometimes it just reflects our fear. So I'm not saying that, you know, world war three is coming or anything like that, but you're well, definitely yeah. I it's just for me, like the, I, I have them usually, my dreams are usually involving car accidents, world events, like catastrophes in a way, like weather. It has to do with, a lot has to do with weather too. Huh. And um, every once in a while I'll get this war one. I have used to have the same dream every Thanksgiving and it was absolutely horrible. Every night I was being chased around this house and I was, was like amazed and I was running around. So it was really nuts. Um, I stopped having that, so it it is kind of nice. But long story short, um, I haven't. My dreams have. I love when I don't have dreams because really, yeah, I used to like them, but now I don't. I like I like because I I just like to sleep. I don't. I rarely sleep. So if I don't sleep, if I if I have dreams, I won't sleep. You know, and I'll just keep waking up all the time, even if they're good. If they're good, they're bad. I'll just wake up. So it's kind of. Yeah, I look forward to going to sleep because my dreams are so awesome. Like, <laughs> I, 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 and, and there really is something to be said. I, you know, we're talking about being omnip omnipotent and how, you know, human beings are so vast, really, when it comes to our energy and what we can experience. Um, so limited when we're here, you know, our carbon-based bodies and we're in 3D and we we're limited by, by physics, the laws of physics as they exist in this universe, um, on this timeline. But you know, when I go to sleep, I feel that I am, it's like, it's kind of like a movie avatar. I know that sounds crazy, but this is just one version of me. And then this is just one version, version of you. And when we cross over into those, uh, the, the, those waves that we're in, we yeah. travel. We really do travel, and we get to experience things that we don't usually get to experience. And um, it can be a really great form of therapy for people. Um, you, it, it, to be able to train your mind, um, to discipline yourself, to be able to—it's—it's it's like simulation. It's almost like a like a training exercise. You can enter into dream state, and you can do whatever you want to do. If there's a fear that you you need help overcoming, you can, you know set forth that intention and ask to be faced with this fear. Yeah. So, and then another thing, um, is that me? Okay. So yeah, that's, um, I will say this now when I was younger and then, you know, every once in a while I'll do lucid dreams because I like that, but that's more not when I'm sleeping. You know, I almost do that as like a hypnosis thing. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's, I call that different because entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> and I love doing like past life regressions on myself. Right. Have you been successful with that? Yeah. Okay. So two things that I envisioned were really crazy. So 
Well, this one I was laying, I did this past life regression and I was laying in like just on my couch, right? And they're like, imagine somebody sitting there or whatever. And I imagined this man and he was like talking to me and then we were walking around and then we ended up going somewhere. And I remember it so vividly. And I used to record myself doing this. Like, this is how weird I am. Okay. Cause I like to record myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this was like really crazy. I mean, I, just to see if anything weird happens, because you know, some yeah. people fall asleep. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, I've done that too. <laughs> Which is why I laugh. Okay. I, okay. So then, um, I had this. I was. I had like, you know, the. I was definitely a Muslim. Like I was definitely Muslim, Islam, whatever. I was walking around these desert, not desert, like you know whatever they're called, just all around the desert in pyramids almost, right? And I was going to say dunes. Dunes, thanks. I couldn't get the word out. I can't remember what the hell it was called. So I was walking around and I, my, everything was red though. Like my, my sari or whatever was red in my face thing, right? And I was carrying a basket and I was all by myself and I was carrying a basket and I was just walking around and it, like something was going on with this basket, but I don't really remember exactly what it was. Maybe and you were like a trader, like you had goods and you were going to go trade. I think it was a kid. I thought it was like a, it was. A oh, kid. there was a kid in the basket. Yeah, like it was really strange. Yeah. Might've been an animal. I don't know. It was strange, but I was like searching for something, you like know, a little goat. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But, um, and then like, I've just talked to all kinds of random people when I've done that. I mean, I think I have, I don't know if it's real, you know, but so speaking of this Nikshatra Maga, which the chart, it's funny, we're talking about this because it just so happens that person, somebody sent me a message today on Facebook. So, which kind of triggered why I wanted to talk about dreams and thought this might be a good idea because I forgot about this, but something about the Nikshatra Maga is they have the power to leave the body right? Usually you do with this specific nakshatra. And this guy, I guarantee you totally does because he's got a few planets in this. Okay. And Rahu. And you know what you, I don't know what you have in that, but when you have Rahu in the 12th house, like you definitely like you have that too, right? It's very spiritual. It's very, so should we just get into his chart since we're kind of, yeah, let's do it. it's a very good segue into his chart. Yeah, totally. So I'm just going to pull up his, well, I'm not even going to pull it up. I actually printed it out because I had a few extra minutes. Oh, nice. So, so I told him the reason why I'm going to do his chart today is because he gave me his daughter's birthday and it, she's a baby. And I think this is like one of those situations. And you know, if I had a baby, I'd be charting that, th charting the baby. Oh, yeah. you know, right. Just cause you know how they act and you, I feel like you can kind of guide their life in a way. It's right? insight. It's totally insight. Everybody should do it. Yes. And he said, you know, and this person said he studied astrology. Um, he actually lives in Maryland and he was like, I've been studying astrology and I'm just really fascinated. You know, and I saw one of your videos somewhere and you know, but I think he studied a lot of Western. So I just, I put up his chart, so took some notes, but I'll say this, his, he's got, I'm not even going to say his name or his birthday or anything. I just want him to make comments if this is right. Um, his birthday is, well, I'll say his birthday, 5-28-1980, born in Baltimore. So he's a Scorpio ascendant. So Scorpios, and it's in the nakshatra of Anurata. Anurata is all about um, being a friend to somebody. Very, this nakshatra tends to be very emotional because his moon is in the first house. So very emotional and he can get his feelings wrapped up in relationships and friendships because of being so caring a lot, right? And what happens is you want to change and like scientific researchers come out of this because they're such great investigators. Um, and he's got Neptune there too. So kind of like he's pretty intuitive, but you know, when you have the moon and Neptune in Scorpio in the first house, you definitely can be, emo you're going to be emotional doubles. Like people are going to see you emotional too, because this is your first house. Your first house is your ascendant. Um, also that his emotions probably get him into like some trouble, I would say, you know, oh, yeah. like too upset, you know? Oh yes. And then his moon, his moon is in Scorpio and his ascendant is in Jasta. And that's all about standing up for a change and for a cause. So he is probably definitely, definitely, definitely um, 
you know, he, he is just all about changing society, changing things. He wants to change things for the better. It's all about um, transfor- transformation and, you know, and he found astrology. So I'm going to say this. He has a conjunction of Rahu, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn all together in the 10th house, okay? okay. Which is insane. And it's all in Leo. So he 100% is all yeah. about using that creative self-expression. He could have yeah. been an actor. He could have been, um, he could have been, even has like phenomenal like mimicking skills. This guy is like probably smooth sailor with speech. He can talk his way in and out of anything. And with women because he's got Venus and Mercury together. Venus and Mercury tends, you tend to be, you're just so, you're so good at smooth talking that people are just magnetically drawn to you because it's even in the eighth house. So he can naturally get stuff out of people just by knowing the right thing to say at the right time and ask the right questions. Okay. Um, He also could have some definitely restraints with authorities because of that 10th house, that Rahu, Jupiter, Mars, Saturn all together. That's like, you know, yes, it can be success. It can be, you know, good things, but it also, it's going to throw some chaos there. So you do just as you're on that, I just want to chime in because I, I've been pulling cards as you're going. Right. And one of the first cards that came up, so we've got, uh, we're looking at two swords, two swords cards, a wands and a disc. So we're all over the place kind of. What we're, where we're not as of right now is emotional. So there's the water thing is not the first thing that jumps out. And it's always the first thing that I notice being a water sign. So this person is definitely um, more of a mental fire than an emotional watery person. Um, and then the 10 of swords, this, this card was the, the first one to come up. This is definitely a problem, with, not a problem, um, an issue with authority. Um, and this is kind of like, this person's mentality their whole life it's very it's almost been like a a, a a source of pride to be so against the grain um but it, there's also like a good a, like a really decent core here so this is also somebody whose passions are like good so they're passionate about doing the right thing yeah but there, there's still an issue with authority there's, so there's like i feel this i feel like with him if he believes in something he will believe it till like, oh, yeah. and I know he follows astrology, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. So that probably changed him a lot. And before that, he was probably confused, lost, and he probably had a really unique way of believe, his belief systems and everything was all out of whack until mm-hmm. this. And now when he has astrology, he feels a little more grounded because devil Scorpio and with all those planets in MAGA, another thing, escape the body you know, you've got these dream abilities and you've got this, you know, definitely all kinds of that stuff going on. But between that and then your eighth house that has Mercury and Venus together in the eighth house, that's phenomenal for astrology. Once again, you know, cause you're, in, and it's in Gemini. So Gemini's are natural people that are good at being in the public. You're probably funny. You're probably like, you, know, you just know what to say. You know how to make Gemini's tend to be, can be smart asses a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. but in like a really, in a, like a nice way, but he's actually more quiet. He probably sits back, listens, and he does really keep his privacy to himself too. But this is probably one of the most sexually energy, sexual charts that I've ever, one of the sexual charts I've ever seen. Huh. Him bonding, like sex is so important to you. It can also get you in trouble, obviously, too, you know, and Scorpios, if you watch any of my videos on the Scorpio things I'm doing, Scorpios are the most sexual sign. I mean, they, they really, because they can connect with that, like, Kundalini energy, and that's what they want. So you look for that in partnerships and in marriages and that, and if you're not getting that, that's going to really be stressful for you. So, you know, that could be something that you might run into, you know, in your journey. This, you were, gonna, were you going to say something? Yeah, the uh, the second round of cards that I pulled here, um, I haven't really designed, uh, I haven't assigned placements to any of these cards. I'm just kind of intuitively going here. But again, the second round of cards starts with a swords card. Um, right. And this particular card is all about interference. So there's a cloudiness. There is an issue right now that feels like it has something to do with finances, material, um, where there's, there is some kind of a serious oppression. 
So it all, it, it, what it's feeling like is like, like he, like there's something that he wants to buy, like to buy something he wants to invest in. I, I'm thinking that it's, it's like a house. Um, cause it's something pertaining to family and, and expanding and growing family doesn't necessarily mean a wife and kids. It could mean yourself and your cat, seriously, just to be clear here. Um, but there's definitely currently an issue blocking money, blocking the flow of abundance. Um, but there's also this like really, really strong faith, right. um, that, that this person holds. And it's, it's, it's not faith in the, in the traditional sense that we understand faith. This is almost whenever this, the star comes up, this is all about, for me, this is about divine energy, angelic energy, um, kind of that, that, that hope. Um, so it, it's almost like a reminder. It feels like a reminder, a reminder here that the goals are great. What he wants is fabulous, but there is definitely something standing in the way. Um, and it feels, we're talking about swords, so it feels like it's, 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 um, there's a personality. There's a personality that's standing in his way. It feels like an ego. So it's not necessarily, it's not just bills. It feels like there is an actual person um, that is blocking, that, that is keeping some, that he, some, I don't know, it could be legal. Um, it could be something like a, a, par, a business partner or something like that. There's some kind of a misunderstanding, an intellectual misunderstanding going on. And, and, and the flow of prosperity is kind of being blocked a little bit. But that's what I wanted to tell you with that. But I'll just keep pulling cards as you, as you go along. Okay, so another, I just wrote some notes. So then he's got K2 in the fourth. So definitely there's this weird happiness void for you. It's a happiness void of you just kind of feel like no matter what you have, what you do, you just have this, God, does anything make me happy, right? And there is some karma with the mother because anytime you have this, and I really do think with your dad too, I mean, because just that power struggle thing with authority, even though your dad's not represented by this, could have been. Um, now, probably good with music. You're probably extremely athletic. I mean, seriously, I'm surprised you, I mean, you have like an acting chart and a athlete chart to a T and a detective. I mean, it's kind of like you're all in one, but there's lots of things going on there, but all you're so creative. Um, so astrology, I mean, talk about astrology. You are the astro, you could be like the world's best astrologer. So continue <laughs> with that. Um, cause you're good at figuring out secrets. And honestly, it's, you really just need to have partnerships that are on the same level as you, or you're really going to struggle because you are so deep and you are so deep with the, the whole sex thing. It's just like that you got to have somebody that has those same beliefs in a way too. Um, now you might have some power struggles with the spouse, maybe the spouse possibly, but maybe the siblings or maybe the siblings and the spouse, or maybe the spouse's siblings, maybe some in-law stuff going on, but nothing too crazy. I would say it's a clash of, of intellectual energy. It's, it's, it's almost like he's happy where he, he is like emotionally it's fine. Yeah. But I feel like there's there's a uh, an issue with the people in his life that can match him intellectually. Currently speaking, is that there's like he is he's represented here to me as the magician, and this is somebody who's a technician, a craftsman, somebody who's very clever, very. Yeah, that's clever. what he I, he works for the naval. He works on the navy base uh, at, at the navy naval yard. And he is one of their tech, uh, like IT technicians. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that card has domain for me personally, it has domain over the craftsmen of, of, of the world, the tradesmen, the workers and things like that. Um, so, you know, but it's also, it's also this quantum leap. It's not just about your, your hands and your skills. It's a, it's a leap in, in, in quantum um, capacity. Right. And it really feels like he's, really sticking to his guns with whatever he's going through right now with his, with his passion, with, with learning new things, mm -hmm. but it's, there's also an issue with it, with it clashing. Um, it, it could be, uh, and it does feel like it's a relationship. 
um, the people that I feel like the people that he cares about and the people that care about him, there's almost even like worry, like people might be worried about him, like dude, back away from the astrology or something like that. That's uh, super funny. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, cause he's probably, we know how that goes. We've, we've all been there. Right. And when you are, and you, when you want to like somebody with our energy finds there's something like astrology, it does consume you. Yeah. I mean, that's all you want to do is ingest it because yeah. it's the only thing that can satisfy the way that this, this deep feeling that you're having, you know? So another couple of things I wrote, maybe you had some, you had some strict teachers and obviously work with technology, maybe something with um, like strict teachers or just anybody that you had to deal with that you were like, even ministers, if you, you might've had like crazy priests or pastors or something going on. I mean, just a lot of, a lot of things with father figures, you know, and authority figures, bosses, you, if you ever can have a chance to work on your own, you're going to work the best because there's always going to be people jealous of you in the workforce and, you know, because you're just, you just who are who you are and you're good at it. So, um, and you you just shine in that let you have leadership skills. So um, you're all about wanting to get to the bottom of things. Great computer engineers, computer science. Um, I said about the relationships, and then and so you have Mercury and Venus. I think I said this earlier, but you have this analytical business skill with beauty together, which is why this is like somebody that makes a natural marketer, somebody that's so great at communicating sales, any kind of selling. And it, whether it be, you know, selling or just communicating, um, but that's also like acting, you know? So you have just these really great communication skills that are really smooth. So that's all I really am going to tell you about yourself right now. Um, you're a Scorpio, so you probably, like me, you've been going through a rough few years because we've had Saturn in our 12th house, now in our first, now it just went into our second, now it's going back into our first. So, yeah. and you're getting double whammed with it because your moon's in Scorpio too. So it has been one hell of a few years for us and it should be getting a lot. It should be getting better. It should be loosening up, but emotionally you probably went through the ringer because the moon is in your first house and it's hitting that in, like, that's another emphasis on that. Um, but your daughter, so his daughter, I'm not going to say her birthday. She's one. I'll, I'll okay. say she's born September 20th, I think September 26th. That's all we'll say. But she is a Sagittarius ascendant, and it's, she's in the nakshatra of Kurvashata. Kurvashata is ruled by Venus. So people that have planets in this um, tend to be really into beauty, into love. They're all about like they love, they're creative and they love creating things, and they're really into um, they're really passionate. Part of Sagittarius, it's like the big part, but then she has Mula in um this as well mars so she has mars in the first house she, people are gonna come off she might come off as like a pistol you know so just she's gonna be driven blunt blunt as can be because I got that too. did you yeah i mean she's gonna be so blunt because sagittarius is already blunt then you throw mars in there now it's all kind of like gonna be for the right cause but some people might take her you know like she'll be extreme but She'll be a go-getter. She could be a professional athlete for sure. So throw her in. I mean, if she wants to play sports, let her play every sport she wants. Um, or even she's going to love the water, love being around the water, uh, just have a natural draw to the water. And I know, I think you said you were worried about your daughter not, um, you know, you not living up to her, you know, just not being the, it didn't exceed her expectations or whatever. And I just want you to know that that is absolutely not the case one of her strongest planets is Venus. And in her chart, um, the father is significated by Venus and that's in the 11th house in a night in Libra and Swati. She looks up to you. You give her hopes, wishes, and dreams. Um, definitely it's a, it's a good thing. It's not anything bad. She's going to have the utmost respect for you. And, you know, definitely no matter what happens, this is, you know, you will be a huge influence in her life and it's going to be for the positive and she's going to have a great bond with you. So that's what I see from this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I pulled some cards for her as well. The little angel. Um, I love doing readings for kids. I don't get to do it all that much, but I, it's such a nice positive energy. It's a break because all adults have their back. Right. 
every adult has baggage. Doesn't matter how good of a person you are, how old you are, the babies are always fun. So I want to tell you that um, the first thing I'm getting is this, uh, it's a, it's like a patriarchy type of thing right now. So like, so it's the hierophant. Um, this and other decks is known as the, the teacher, the mentor, but it's always paternal. And so this could have something to do with a church. Um, I don't know if there, if anybody's a member of any church of any kind, it doesn't necessarily have to be a religious order, but it is, there is an emphasis on, um, a patriarchal type of, of, of scene. It could be that you are going to take, um, real control over her life and be um to assume uh, a leadership role it almost feels like like a coach i don't know how big yeah, you i have are. that written down coach hands healing and contracts so yeah like, okay contract yeah. That's, no that's really really interesting because what you know uh, it doesn't feel like a church which would be you know or anything like that or uh, could she work for the government who the daughter the, oh yeah 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 totally yeah um you know happened. she there's definitely an emphasis here on material things and her and and there is a desire here for success to shine really yeah. really bright um that's it's definitely in the cards there's also a woman the queen of wands and we're looking at the nine of cups and the prince of discs so the prince of discs i don't know maybe that could be a a, a sibling in the, in the future. I don't know. Sometimes it happens. Um, sometimes they, you know, that they, they'll show what up. Mine is that, could that be a cancer? Prince of discs is always an earth. It's earth. Oh, okay. Always earth. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I, I want to go back to the hierophant because I feel like your influence on her obviously is just so paramount. Um, um, the mother showed up here too, but the theme, the greater theme here is, is, there's an emphasis on the team as opposed to one. So that could be that you want to expand your family um, or something like that. But I feel like she's definitely, I, maybe she wants to be a Girl Scout or, or do something. There's like emphasis here on being part of a team yeah, um, and having a coach and that sort of thing and, and rules and, and structure. I feel like she would thrive in a structured environment working with a team. So sure. I also have down, it's funny, attorney, because this Mars Sagittarius makes one hell of an attorney because they can fight. They're quick. They're witty. Yeah. Like they've got that wit about them. They can like just blurt stuff out. And, and then not only that, she's got um, K2 in the third. So all those things of communication and stuff, she might be shy at first about it, but then one day she'll just like bust out of nowhere and she'll just really be good. But also when you have K2 in the third, you can be like a natural competitive athlete. You'll be, go through like this K2, there's a lack there, but you'll still have this competition because you're, you'll naturally be good at it. So well, she's, and she's, she's happy. And I think another thing that's get, that, you know, is that I'm kind of seeing here is this she derives a sense of stability. She will derive a real strong sense of identity and stability because of the structure in her life. Yeah. So, and, and this being part of a team, it's like the team sports or the Girl Scouts, or I don't know what they do these days. There's all kinds of stuff the kids can do. Well, I also have here, she could help unprivileged, um, unprivileged people. So maybe be eventually be some sort of, um, helping women humanitarian you know just helping other countries yeah. or something like that because she's got this 12th house saturn in the 12th and she she'll be wants like to work she wants to get her hands dirty yes and you know? that's, her son is in hosta it's all about the hands so and this is seriously like he could even be like a reiki master but anytime you have the sun or any planets in hosta you're you're just really good with your hands whether you she turns out to be a boxer what's that that was lust or strength, but that's fabulous because this, this girl is really passionate, very, very passionate, followed by, followed by the emperor. So here's the patriarchy again. Um, and that, that could just be the father's like influence on her, how he's just her entire world, the son right now, but definitely keep that in mind is that you're her number one, like. 
her yeah, world. I see that too. More, yeah. And then also like she's she, she's um, her moon's in Cancer, so she's going to be very emotional, very creative. Maybe even arch- she'll go like. She'll be like just able, very artistic, very good at all, everything like this. And she will be, she'll be so goal oriented. She'll always have a goal. And like, you'll probably notice it now, like even as a baby, you know, she's probably just, just very, you can tell she's just different. Like she's, she's like a independent, strong child. And she's in cancer. Her moon's in cancer, but it's in the nakshatra of Aslesha. So a matter of fact, man, she could even get into the medicine field. I mean, that's double Scorpio, Saturn in the 12th, work in a hospital, behind the scenes, Mars in the first. That makes sense. That would, uh, that would explain the Hierophant too. Like I'm thinking of like a hospital with a, with a name, with like a saint name or something like that, even, or maybe that's where she was born. I don't know. Like a St. Vincent's or a St. Mary or something like that. It, it, it's possible. Yeah. Um, and then also she's got this creative actress energy, just like you too, because she's got two planets, Rahu and Mercury and Prabha Falguni. And also she might do something with contracts and, um, putting things together and just, just very good at, um, arranging things and arranging organizations. And so that's kind of why I thought maybe she might work for the government doing something internal with, you know, just could be something like that, but I've got she, a lot of- bright bright shining hearts really she's, she's serious got a great chart like this is a chart that i would look at and be like this is a like a powerful chart not somebody yeah. with a bunch of like you know everybody goes through their stuff don't don't get me wrong but she is so strong and independent that she will mars in the first house in sagittarius you are independent as can be you know you're just definitely you know what to do how to do it and you're not going to rely on anybody you know, if anything, people would be too dependent on her. So mm-hmm. she'll be. The, the, the dad's being reflected in her cards a lot, like a lot. More, more so than the mother. I hope that doesn't offend the mother, but that, that could just be because he inquired about it. Yeah. Um, but, he, but he's all over, you know, he's, he, he's always discs. So he's the worker. He's the provider. You know, he's, he, put, he buys her everything she has. He buys for her sort of thing. Also, the relationship between the mother and the father, it's very much the, the, the power, you know, it's, it's shiny and it's bright. There's nothing dark here at all. What I'm seeing here is a unified team, a very strong squad, if you will. Um, and, and there's bright beginnings. There's, you know, the two of wands is fantastic. There's always, for me, it, it's represented as people that are um completely combined in will and purpose and 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 motive so these two people have come together 100 percent for this child to help this child to facilitate this child's well-being um and it's it's really really sunny you guys there's nothing here that that i have no warnings no red flags no health issues nothing like that yeah, Sagittarius, she's going to have long legs. Guarantee you she has long legs. She's tall and she's, like, fast. She'll be really fast. She'll be um, – and she'll be a good researcher. She'll be, like, really good at researching and analyzing things. I mean, she certainly has a couple of astrology, you know, healing things going on as well. So not as much as her father does. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think- he's guiding her, so it's, it's just as well. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a good chart. You know, honestly, this, there's nothing in here that I would say you got to watch out for this. Have you, seen, out. have you seen bad charts, Heidi? Yeah, a lot of them. Oh man. Yeah. I can imagine. But you know what? I don't get to do too many kids, but that's the thing. Like if I had, if you can see your kid's chart, why wouldn't you want to see it and be like, okay, my kid, if, if they know, if you know, they're going to be like, there could be some red flags in your kid's chart. So you know to like, don't let them do this. Right. Don't do this with them. Don't right. be too controlling with this way or that, you know? And I think that's where you can really make the kid the best it can be, you know? Or if it starts to, if your daughter or son says, you know, starts doing something, then you're like, what is that? What is she doing? Or try to distract her away from something that's mm-hmm. really creative. That's right. probably like, you know, what if that person could be the next like Picasso, right? I mean, you just- but they need help, right? Yeah. 
and they just so that's like how I think you look at it and yeah so all right well, I hope that was what you wanted to hear yeah hopefully you liked hopefully got something out of that one <laughs> so and I'm sorry guys we couldn't do this and figure this out so sorry anyway but we did what we could we did what we could we're gonna work the kinks out with going live and it'll all be great yeah <laughs> my computer we have really the weather's been crazy here too so maybe it's like internet connections in yeah the so all right jenny thanks so much okay. it's been fun and all right i'll all see right. you guys bye. soon bye everybody